All right, gonna do a little work on this generator. Um, it's, I think it's about 12 years old. I've, I've owned it for about 12 years. It might be a little older than that. Um, I, I've never brought it inside. It's been outside in the woods from since day one. I don't know what happened to this wheel right here. The other wheel is just beaten to everything. I mean, that wheel is gone. The grass, I pulled it out of the weeds today. So, the grass growing all through it. I'm gonna clean it up, put on new wheels. I got a new carburetor for it. The old carburetor still works. I'll see if I can start it up. Uh, I know I've always put um thing in it. The last time I started, it might have been a year and a half, two years, and I heard it was surging when I started it. Let me see if it's, man, it doesn't even have a label anymore for on off, so I don't even know which side is on, which side is off. Uh, okay, let me see if it'll start. Try to set this thing up in a position where you can see what's going on. Uh, nope, doesn't want to stay. Okay, let's see. Choke. That is not gonna work. Let me try to fix that cord. Okay, the cord doesn't seem like it's working, so I'm gonna have to take off the whole um, fan shroud, clean it up while I'm there. I'll put on the wheels first. I got new wheels for it. Two new wheels and a new carb BS588. I'll go ahead and start tearing it down, put it back together. Start by taking off the tank on top. I pulled the hose loose, made sure the, the valve was closed. And on this one here, you could just take off the, the jug to go fill it up on its own. You don't have to um, take the whole thing. So you got four of these and then it has a handle right there. You could just pick it up. So you got three yet. And it's a Briggs and Stratton 5550 watts. So gas motor. I think the, um, the engine is uh, 13, I think it's a 13 and a half horsepower. Lift it just like that. So, has his own personal jug you can go with. Now, I'll go ahead and take this off. You just have two screws right there in there. That's it. And two on the back. And then this comes off and then I can reach everything else I need to. All right, the screws up front, these you could use a 5 16 or T25. The ones on the back, back here, it's a 3 8 So, and a short extension would work on both of them. Don't have to have anything special to do it. So I'll go ahead and take the cover off and then go to the next section. Um, one thing you have to be careful what, with, with the way I had this one, it was outside in the woods. Make sure there's no snakes or anything in it. So you move it around a lot while it's outside, drag it all over the place. If it's in there, it'll come out. All right. 
All right, I got the cover off. Let's see what I found in there. Wasp nest. Nothing's in there right now, so that's good. But once that cover comes off, laying it to the side, you could unplug these two wires if you want to. But we're trying to get down to that nut right there in the center of the screen. And I think the other one is at the bottom. But I'll go ahead and work on the wheel so it's a little more stable right now. It's all over the place. All right. That wheel is giving me a hard time to take off. So I went ahead and started taking off more parts. Look like I'll have to be putting on a new carburetor. This thing came out in pieces. See the bugs there? I sprayed them. So they won't be lasting too long. Got a piece there. It was uh, 5 sixteenths to take off those nuts. So I'll take that off, put it in the sandblaster in the blasting cabinet, clean it up, put on the new carb. I still feel like trying to start it with that old carb just to see what it does, but I have a new one, so I'll see. All right, to get the fan shroud off, I have to take off the carburetor, so I might as well switch it out. The carburetor is just these two screws and then the linkage up at the top. And that's it. All right, the um, fan shroud came off when I took the piece on the um, carburetor off, the air filter box. The motor, let me check. Yes. Got compression. I pull, pulled this in. And it seems like it's a spring that's a problem. If I have to, I can always put the uh, drill to it and turn it with the drill to let it fire up. So I can try that. I see with the old carburetor, nothing changed. All right, I sprayed a little bit of PB Blast on it every place that I could um, squeeze it in. Roll it in and out a few times. I can feel it starting to pull in, yep. PB Blast, original formula, the regular, well, I can put this back on now, okay, I put the tank back on, open the valve, the gas came out, it's not the healthiest smelling gas, but we're going to try it since we're going to be changing out the carb anyway, and I got my cobalt drill. Don't even know what size that one is. Uh, inch and an eighth. So we're gonna try to see what this does. Okay, open. It's, oh, I checked it with the um, the meter, and it's in the on position there. Nothing. Spray some of this in there. Yeah. The chuck is spinning out. I need two hands to do this. Alright, I tilt the tank up so the gas would flow in there. I don't want to put good gas if it's you know, bad in there already. The spray.
That old dog run good. All right, I'll leave that old carburetor on it. All right, I'm gonna try another method to get this. Is the bearing that's right here and it's stuck from coming off. So I'm gonna try the saws on it, or the reciprocating saw. Try and cut it where I can take it off a lot easier. Attempt number two with the reciprocating saw, the bearing just spun. Now I'm gonna try this one here. See if I can get it behind and pry it off. I don't think it'll work. I'll try with two hands, see what happens. Okay, I use pry bar, hammer and pry bar, sawzall, mallet, rubber mallet. I'm gonna have to just spray it down with some PB Blast. There's no grooves on it, it's smooth. I'll spray it down with some PB Blast and then try to get it off again. It's off. PB Blast and hit it with the rubber mallet and it came off, it wasn't that hard. I got that. I, I want to get this off, but I want to put it back and take these washers off because the other side just has this. So I want them to be even and look like I'm going to have to drill a hole through this to put a carter pin because I have no idea how it's supposed to stay. All right, so I'll go back and try to get that off without damaging it. BB blast again and took it off without damaging it. I just uh, moved it back and forth and once it, it got up to right there and I just tapped it, it fell off. So that's pretty good. Now put it back in same direction with the other one. It's in this direction. Came off easy. Give me a hard time to go back. Okay. Okay. It's in that same direction there. All right. So now I can put on the wheels and set up. All right. What I did now is put the wheels on. I put a mark. Now I have a washer to go on here. So I need to drill somewhere out here. It's about a quarter inch off the wheel itself. And I marked it on both sides. I have that drill bit. I wish I had a smaller one. I'll look around and see if I have one. But the carter pin will hold everything from walking back out. Then I can clean this thing up and it won't be back outside. It'll be an indoor machine. All right. I drilled the little hole for a carter pin. These washers I just bought. And that's just to keep it the wheel from coming back off. What I did after I got it um, drilled, just clean it up, put the wheel on, and these wheels are. Uh, Right there. I bought them locally in a store, Agri Supplies. Um, I don't know where else could you find it. That place has everything. And the price of it was each wheel. Um, $24.99 each. So $49. 98 for the pair and then these little washers were 10 cents a dime so i'm gonna go ahead and put this on i got to use two hands to just lift it and put it on so i'll go ahead and do that and be back all right i guess you can do it two two ways i tried to screw that would work good too but i would have to screw it in and out or i can tap it but Go back to my old 
Call the page. Perfect. Let me see if the biggest one would fit. Yeah. The longest one is actually more narrow than these. So that'll do it right there. It's got play, but I don't really care. That's how it should be. I could even put washes if I wanted to make it different, but it'll stay like that. And I'll use that other one for the other side. Start putting everything back together. Then uh, it might be getting dark by the time I, I'm done. So maybe tomorrow I can scrub it down, clean it up, make it look presentable. All right. All right, I gave the um, fan shroud a paint. Gave it a nice color so it ain't all rusted anymore. I think I'm going to paint the plastics on it. I have flat black. Uh, I just painted the um, filter enclosure. Cleaned it up. So it looked almost new. I'll, I'll wash off all the dirt on it in the morning. I won't put it back together yet. This is still wet. So I just have it sitting there. I won't bolt anything in. So that'll be it for tonight. And then tomorrow start just buttoning it back up. I need a new hose for here. The emissions exhaust um, gases hose, EGR hose. So it recirculates the um, oil, the vapors of oil back into the the filter housing and get sucked back into the carburetor to reburn and mine is torn there torn at the top everywhere so i'll be putting it back together all right i got the body everything back together i just scrubbed off all the dirt on it grease dirt trees everything cleaned up um painted over the is no filter in there but since i'm gonna wash it down i need everything covered up i'm gonna cover this hole that's uh where the hose comes for the um gases from the oil and goes back to the um filter so i'll have to tape those two holes up the one here and the one over there and then spray her down clean up good and now that she have wheels and can roll she'll be back inside i always thought it was just a briggs and stratton it's a generex by Dr briggs and stratton i think that's what the label says Generex by Briggs and Stratton. Yeah. So that'll be all I show on it because the rest is just clean it up. And then I guess uh, Monday I'll be using it on the job. So I could probably take a quick little glimpse of it. Okay, I'm training the fuel. That's the color of the fuel. It's like a milk. I don't even know how that thing started last night. Um, cleaned it up. I cleaned it up and then I ran it with that that fuel and um, dried off so that it would be dry. So it's cleaned up now. Down there might need a little more cleaning up. I just left it out in the sun, have it running. And I cleaned it up. I changed out the table on it from that old one that was on there. I should have bought a, a new plug, but that plug looks fairly new. I don't know if I changed it before. It's that little shiny thing down in the middle. So I got a new filter for it. something else where did I put that filter oh we 
it as a filter. So, new filter, fresh gas I got now, the new rope, that is the string that I got. Uh, it's, I guess it's just a universal string because it came with this little doohickey. And I got some bolts. <coughs> I was missing one. I thought I was missing two. So I put it in so everything is secure. And I forgot the one hose for right there. So I'll have to go back down the road and get it. I'm going to try to see if you can see. If y'all can see the um, separation of water and gas. That's the separation. I'm going to pour it in the glass and come back and look at it. Because that's a lot of water was in that tank. Okay. Come back after about a minute, two minutes. That's the separation. Water. It's about half and half. So what I'll do is pour some uh, rubbing alcohol in the, in the tank. Rubbing alcohol will mix with water. And... It's still flammable enough to run this thing. So whatever moisture is left in there will be mixed in. So I'll be back. All right, started. Just let it run. Choke is still on half. Thanks for watching it. 